I'm wearing a tighter shirt, so you probably know I'm much fatter. There isn't a tighter shirt. We checked. Hey guys, Third Street Reactions here. I'm Shane, okay? And if you guys know me, I love Star Wars. I've been in this industry for a, for a little bit. I've done a few lightsaber fights to various critical acclaim. Uh, so go check those out. They're on my old channel, okay? And go check them out as well, okay? I'm super excited to get into The Bad Batch, okay? Which is basically a sequel to one of the greatest uh, TV shows ever, Star Wars The Clone Wars, okay? So... Season 7 of The Clone Wars. Overall, I thought it was pretty damn good. The finale was amazing. The beginning was pretty good. I didn't like some of the stuff in the middle. I never really loved or cared about clones or Mandalorians or anything like that. Or Stormtroopers. Uh, but The Mandalorian changed all that when that premiered on Disney+. Plus. I love that show. Now I love Mandalorians. Uh, but even when I watched The Clone Wars, I didn't really care too much about them. I wanted to get back to the Jedi and the Sith. Okay, in my relationship with the Empire, you know, besides the Sith, I didn't really care too much about it. Until I read the book, The Lost Stars, it's a young adult novel, and it is amazing. When the Bad Batch, um, well, Clone Force 99, when we get to see them in the Clone Wars, I can't say they didn't have character. They had a lot of character. And there's, um, there's, there was four of them, and now I believe there's five. There's Hunter, and he is the leader of the bunch. He's kind of like a solid snake dude. He's a tracker, and he's good at stealth. We have Wrecker, who he is kind of like the comedic relief of the show. He's kind of like like Michelangelo. Michelangelo is strong, so his attribute is strength. We have Tech, and Tech is um, he's in charge of data and, and uh, analyzing things. He's obviously the tech guy. And we have Crosshair, who is the sniper. He is the marksman, and he has very good vision as well. And he also ha he's also being enhanced because he's got a little lens that pops out on the side and we have the I believe the newest member of the group Echo so like I was mentioning Star Wars of Clone Wars Echo was presumed dead on the Citadel a little earlier in the Clone Wars show but he wasn't really dead okay and remember Echo he was he was a, a part of the original group that came out of training okay and we lost pretty much all those guys Echo was presumed dead he was taken from this he was taken captured by the Separatist and he was basically his brain was data mined so they can get battle strategies, secrets of uh, the Galactic Republic. And um, yeah, he had a pretty shitty life. He was all pale and he was all robotic looking. And I, when I was watching it, I thought for sure he was going to die. Um, because it was like, okay, put this guy out of, out of his misery. But no, that's not the case. He ended up joining the final battle. He's got like this socket arm that he can use for hacking into things. Which he figured that Tech would be able to do that. But that's okay, you know, because Echo is awesome and he's OG. Based off the trailer, I, I assume that he's going to have a pretty big role and he's going to be the fifth member of the Bad Batch. So I'm just, I just want to jump into it. I'm really excited. I love Star Wars. I'm just going to jump in, but before I do, make sure you guys go check out our other reactions, okay? Such as Star Wars The Mandalorian and Star Wars The Clone Wars, which I'm currently doing right now. All right, we're going to start now. After the Jedi Knights thwarted an attempt to kidnap Chancellor Palpatine, Hey, nice! We had some Revenge of the Sith scenes. Dapa Baloba? She is supposed to be in prison in the Jedi Temple. Dave Filoni must not have Red Shatter Point. I don't know why he would put her in this. So. Hey, nice. Here. I'm here. Caleb, where are the reinforcements? Don't worry. They're right behind me. Uh, where are they? Caleb? Trust me. I have any other. That is Caleb Doom. Yeah, that's what I thought. But you gotta see these clones. They're different. Is that Freddy Prince Jr.'s voice? Nice, nice. Hey, nice. There's, that's Tech, and Hunter was obviously with the knife. I can't believe Caleb Doom's in it. I'm more excited about Caleb Doom than I am these guys. He looks cool. That be one droid. Uh -huh. 
I feel bad. Launch the counterattack. It's yes, so weird to see her right, here. Sir, yes, sir. Haven't seen her since the Phantom Menace. I don't think she's on the council anymore. There you are, little Jedi. You missed all the fun. Watching your team in action was the fun. Care to introduce your his, new friends, Caleb? His voice yes, is pretty master. deep. We move fast. Good. That's the only way I know. That's awesome. So he sounds a little old, but I guess he's probably like 16. Because Caleb's, or uh, uh, Kane and Jairus is probably around 30. That is awesome. It's so good that Star Wars is becoming this, homogen this homogenizing of all the stuff. Oh, Jesus. Oh, fuck. I can't believe that made me as emotional as it did. Fuck my ass. What just happened? The comm channel is repeating one directive. Execute Order 66. Yeah, I heard that too. What's Order 66? <laughs> I am not certain. Jesus, dude. He's a kid, man. <laughs> I'm just as confused as you are. Jesus. No! <laughs> Where's the Jedi? Well, usually when someone falls, you look down, not across. Well, some of us don't like to watch. <laughs> Man, I don't want this to divide them, but it's obviously going to, narratively speaking, it has to. Who's that? Fucking Jedi, ma'am. You're still new. You'll get used to it. Speak for yourself. Crosshair's being a fucking cunt. I don't use that word lightly either. An order is an order. Since when? Yeah, like for those guys, they don't follow None orders. This makes sense. Why didn't I react like the others? You are more machine than man. Percentage wise, at least. More machine now than man. <laughs> Man. Galactic Empire. Secure. Society. We're soldiers of the Republic. Republic. Empire. What's the difference? Dude, Crosshair is a bitch. The systematic termination of the Jedi is a big one for me. Let. We've got company. Oh, Hi. he's got his senses. It's good to see that man. The skill level and efficiency of our clones is far superior to that of any recruited body. I shall be the judge of that, Prime Minister. Damn. So is it about money? So all already in white, huh? I like to blow things up because I like to blow things up. Got it. An Imperial's been sent to evaluate the clones. What kind of evaluation? Hopefully not mental. Clearly we never passed that. <laughs> the defect squads got themselves a new recruit. <laughs> Another member added to the sad batch. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. That's a horrible, horrible thing to say, though. I did. Now apologize to my friends. I suggest you keep moving. Dude, you're a grown man. You're probably 10 years old. You know? Settle down. What the? Oops. Not again. Not again. Oh, he could have broke his neck right there. Echo, watch out! Echo, 
Echo had a uh, that implant like uh, Lobot did from Star Wars Episode Five. You all appear to be genetically defective clones. I will leave you to process the shock of this revelation. <laughs> Tarkin has requested to see more of your squad in action. Then we are not being reprimanded. You're being tested. Now go gear up. Cross that, take the towers. It's good to be back here again. Ah, oh, man. He's so strong. Give me more! The Galactic Empire is to be stronger. The Republic which preceded it switched to live fire. Oh, hey, dude. New toy. Oh, shit. He didn't know. We have the Dark Troopers here. Or they look like the Dark Troopers. Is that Tech or Echo? Because Echo is the hacker, right? The clones of Experimental Unit 99 have a tendency to veer from standard combat protocol. Hey, he's smiling. You never thought that man would really smile. Oh! That was badass, man. Should aim for his head. Hey! That was great. Dude! That was, that was, that was great. Dude, if they didn't deviate from standard protocol, then I don't think they would have lived. That was like a suicide mission. Ain't no firepower. You should see the new armory. He actually cried. <laughs> right. We both did. These aren't separatists. They're Republic fighters. Why would Tarkin send us to attack our own forces? Because we refuse to fight for an empire. Hey, Your Saw Gerrera. Boom! Trained by Captain Rex and General Skywalker to fight for the Republic. Dude, he, he should be a lot more fucked up looking. Why don't you take a look at the insurgents you were sent to destroy? Yep. Oh, makes you wonder what else they're lying about. Let's mobilize. Pack up the camp. You can either adapt and survive, or die with the past. The decision is yours. He looks great, man, though. He should have more of an afro, you know? If you don't have the stomach to do what needs to be done, then you're not fit to lead this squad. Oh man, that was great. A state of heightened awareness is not unusual for an enhanced clone such as herself. She's a when clone? When Alice spoke of five clones, Tarkin assumed that meant us. But Echo's a reg. Oh yeah. The fifth is Omega. Oh! I confirmed my suspicions after analyzing her DNA while we were in the infirmary. And you waited until now? I thought it was obvious. <laughs> How is it obvious? We're going back for her. Oh, snap. Disobeying orders again over a kid. Bad play, Hunter. Ah, uh, man, he might not be long for this squad. She's one of us. We're not leaving her there. Okay, that's why she looks different. But she should be more tan as well. You know, she's like a blonde New Zealand sounding person. Someone's coming. Time to call. Oh, Jesus. You're not authorized to be in here. We are official Kemino. Don't touch me, Troy. What the fuck? AZ. I assume you know the punishment for treason. Treason? Throw them in the bridge. Jesus. It smells weird. Because it's clean. Well, the plan wasn't a total failure. <laughs> I want to go with you. How touching. 
How touching. <laughs> Oh no! Get to the console and hit the lever to lower the ray shield. Ray shields? We're smarter than this. Hit the switch, Omega! Oh! That's a nice little jab. Now surrender. Is that an order? <laughs> I guess it is. <laughs> Jeez. Almost got it. Seal the bay doors. It's crazy that you didn't do that already, but that's okay. Oh! Summons of a ride in the controls! Lama Sue! Damn! Alright. Is this what you were looking for? Oh! You found my Lula! Ow! Lula? <laughs> Impressive shot back there. Yeah, right? How'd you learn to do that? I don't know. I never fired a blaster before. I guess I got lucky. Blood, of course, for J-19. J-19? We know a guy. <laughs> Who's on J-19? Damn. You know, just like when I watched The Mandalorian, I'm more interested than I thought I was going to be in this. Okay, I was like, okay, it's Dave Filoni. I know it's going to be like a high quality show. There seems to be a pretty big push from behind, that like, especially from the fandom. Like people who love the Filoni, the Filoni-verse, they love the Clone Wars, uh, Rebels, and um, even Resistance, you know, which I know that's, he produces that. He doesn't necessarily, he isn't necessarily as hands-on. But, okay, so first of all, the most interesting thing to me about this, uh, well, there's two things. Okay, no, first, the big, the most interesting thing about this show is Omega. Who is she? I mean, she's a clone. I guarantee she's going to have force powers or something. But in Star Wars, it's always been an issue cloning someone who has the force. They, they go crazy, and that's always kind of been the idea. And it's never really been done effectively. Palpatine wasn't able to do it in a... In a <clears throat> Palpatine didn't have a long-term solution to the problems that cloning Force users presented. Okay? Uh, and if you play Star Wars The Force Unleashed, then they, they really use that um, storytelling device to its full potential with Starkiller and especially The Force Unleashed 2. Okay, so I, I really like Omega, okay? I was afraid that she might be a Mary Sue or something, but no, she is great. She's a sweet, caring girl, and she's also basically a fet. You know what I'm saying? Like, she is. She is one of the clones of Jenga. She just has two X chromosomes. So that is just awesome. <laughs> I, oh, man. Okay, so, like, there's... Oh, man. I'm calling her right now. She's got force powers. Or, okay, no. She doesn't have force powers. I'm calling it right now that they're going to do something with her in the force. There are multiple, you know, I think there are multiple signs pointing at, at the fact that, especially when she was talking to Crosshair, when she says, hey, I know how you feel. It wasn't your fault. You're angry. Okay. Right before Crosshair shows up, she looks in that direction and she's like, hey, I don't think we're going to have to wait long. Boom, the doors open, Crosshair comes out like a Benedict Arnold. One of the best parts of this episode to me is seeing Caleb Doom, a.k.a. Kanan Jarrus, the hero and leader of the Ghost Crew from Star Wars Rebels. That series takes place like 14 years after Revenge of the Sith. So, yeah, so Caleb, like I said, he'd be 15, 16 years old. 
It was so great to see. I mean, it was an emotional thing. Every time you hear that freaking music, no, nah, no. Nah. Okay, I can't do it right now. I can hear it in my head. But I'm not gonna. I'm not going to hum it because I'm gonna sound like a fool. Da, 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 da. No, no. Literally, that's terrible. I'm sorry. I can hear it in my head though. Okay, because it was. Uh, I think it's Art Anakin's Dark Deeds, right? Is that what it's called? Um, I used to mow the grass for the city of Marietta. I would listen to it while I was mowing. I started crying. And these fucking hillbilly rednecks looking at me like, Boy, you, you're, what's your Filipino ass crying for? I'd be like, oh, I'm sorry. You know, it was embarrassing. But it was great to see him. It was great to see him. It was great to hear that music. I remember hearing that music in a new way, seeing Ahsoka's scene at the end of, at the end of season seven of The Clone Wars. It's great to hear it again. It's great to have all this connective tissue for these Star Wars properties, okay? There's the movies are the core thing, but the Clone Wars, Mandalorian, this show, Resist, uh, well, in Resistance, but, and Star Wars Rebels, they're not joking around. It's truly, this is truly all one big shared universe. And it was just great to see him. Like, I don't know if we'll see him again. Like, we don't really need to. But if we do, that would be great. Like, Oh, man, that was so good to see him. I mean, it was obviously Freddie Prince Jr. or, was, or someone who was doing such a good impression. It sounded just like him, which is almost a problem because that guy's like in his early to mid 40s and he sounds older. And he I mean, he sounded like that for a long time. But like it, I don't want to say it took me out of it. It didn't take me out of it, but it, it I noticed like, oh, that's a very deep voice. That 15, 16-year-old kid sounds like a 45-year-old man. You're just mad the franchise isn't aging with you. Okay, he's beautiful, though, so it doesn't matter. I love that guy. Uh, and I love I Know What You Did last summer, too. Another huge thing that, as I was watching the show, I just kind of forgot about was we get to see Depa Biloba. So Depa Biloba was on, this, on the Jedi Council in Star Wars Episode on The Phantom Menace, and she's never really seen again, I don't think. But uh, some cool stuff about her is she was trained by the great mace windu okay it's mace windu's padawan and actually in matt stover's book uh shatterpoint which is mace windu's novel where he goes to Corin hal it's the jungle planet that he's from so this i mean it's matt stover if you have not read the revenge of the sith novelization i swear that i believe it is one of the best books not just star wars books best books i have ever read Top 10. I mean, I'm a little biased, but dude, it is such, he is such a good writer. He also wrote Shatterpoint, and it is amazing. So, Mace Windu just goes to, back to his planet that he came from, and there, it's a big jungle planet, and there's a tribal leader there, okay? Um, he's also trying to, I think, find his former apprentice, Depa Biloba, but she falls to the dark side, and in the end of that book, she's basically taken back with back to Coruscant to the Jedi Temple to be... I think she is in some kind of stasis. But she's in prison, basically, underneath the Jedi Temple. And never will hear about her again. It's a very sad ending. But uh, for some damn reason, uh, they're trying to say that's not canon. But I just... In my head, it's my head canon. Okay? Because that book is so good. And it is so good. It's one of the best Star Wars books ever. But seeing her invalidates that. So I'm a little sad. At the same time, it's great to see her again. Or maybe, you know what? Maybe she... That take... That... No, you know what? Hmm. No, this would have to be so... Because she did so many atrocities. There's no way they let her out. And now she's leading the clones. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. I'm going to have to do some mental gymnastics. But that was her. But she didn't last long. She had a very emotional ending. Obviously, listening to... I hope, I hope I'm right saying... Anakin's dark deeds and Caleb's you know he's a child and you see this guy who this kid who grows up to be this great man and you know chain and he <clears throat> trains Ezra built Ezra Bridger and it just and there's so many stories like his story in particular that's not wrapped up yet it's so great to see him okay I'm glad he got away and it was just ah oh, man it's just so emotional seeing him like it really was and I don't like that show probably half as much as I love the Clone Wars, but I love him and I love, you know, uh, Twilight of the Apprentice is one of the best episodes I've ever watched of anything. But man, it was so good to see him. And I'm going to move on from that because I've been talking about it forever. We got to see some great action also on Planet Caller. Caller. I think it's called Caller. Yeah. And we get to see all the individual 
Clone Force 99 troop, uh, soldiers display their own individual talents. And it was just great to see Wrecker push that tank over the bridge, I mean, over that cliff, and then it took, it took two other tanks with it. And it was cool seeing those, those cables, those, those tow cables, just like we see in Empire when uh, Luke shoots it, to, uh, shoots it on the at, -AT leg, and obviously you, know, you guys know what I'm talking about. And then we go back to Kamino, and the world has changed. Things have changed, and because of the, the fact that, these, uh, that Clone Force 99, the Bad Batch, they've had genetic mutations that have interfered with the chip's ability to control their minds to make them just follow Order 66. It's pretty clear now that they're not really accepted by the rest of the Stormtrooper Legion. They're really looked at as outcasts, and they've always been outcasts, but now they're antics are kind of insufferable to this uh, this new regime that's going to want them to fall in line. And of course, that's where we get to see Omega. And now that I think about it, the way they met is they locked eyes when she was far away, and then she started following them. Yeah, I, she, there has to be something with that character. I've always wondered where uh, Kamino, where they stood on the war and after they stopped using clone troopers. Apparently, Nala say, Obviously, for many reasons, probably financially, uh, financial motivation being a, one of the top ones, doesn't want that deal to go away. And uh, Lama Su, she helped the Bad Batch escape. So that was interesting. And she's doing it to the chagrin of, of Nala Se. They want to keep that contract. They want to keep making money. But we know that doesn't happen. But I guess for me... I thought it would be more than just some, you know, they want the Empire to be efficient, better than it was before. And we, we, we all know that even though it's cheaper, it's not more efficient. So it's just, to me, like, they, I feel like they have to have a really good reason for Tarkin to go, you know what, we're just going to open these academies and we're going to have, I'm pretty sure he says something about having a conscription, some kind of draft where they force, did, did he say that? Yeah. We know that Luke wants to go to the Academy and kids want to go to the Academy to serve the Empire. I mean, for the most part, the common person doesn't really think the, the Empire is the worst thing ever, from, from as far as I know. Uh, the only way, the only reason why we kind of think that, honestly, is because at the end of Episode 6, they added in all that stuff where all the planets from the original trilogy to Pico trilogy, they're all celebrating. Yeah, I mean, so that's just what, that's the only reason why I think I would, people would think that. It was also great to see Saw Guerrera. We do know that we see him in a few years, or is it a few years, or just very shortly we're going to see him in Rogue One. But I'll tell you what, he looks more like he does in the Clone Wars here, but he, his hair needs to be a little, you know, a little more, uh, a little more froish, a little, um, how should, like, you know, that, you know, someone of African descent that has a very, cur very curly African type hair. Uh, I didn't see that there. But he looked like a badass. It was good to see him. So he's definitely not as crazy yet. I don't think the saw that we see in Rogue One would have handed back Hunter's pistol back to him uh, and said, hey, make a choice. You know what I mean? I think the saw that we know, the saw that we're going to see also in uh, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, he's definitely someone to be trifled with. But he probably gets pushed in that direction. So we saw... Echo, he had the head implant that, that Lobot has in Star Wars Episode Five. That was cool. Um, we all got, we also got to see Dark Troopers, or like the prototype for Dark Troopers, in the training facility that they were in when Tarkin was testing the, uh, the Clone Force Ninety Nine. They were using live ammunition, which I thought was pretty dirty, but we did get to see the prototype Dark Troopers. It was awesome. Great action all around. This series isn't afraid to show some dark things. Obviously, Depa Biloba being the standout, but also just the, jed the dead Jedi being transported. We see their lightsaber fall out. Um, I guess the biggest question now is, is Crosshair, is he, is, it, is this show gonna be, is it gonna do what Star Wars Resistance did? Are they gonna have one of the characters fall from grace and then try to, um, uh, get back into the fold and um, what's the word? Redeem and, and redeem their self. I don't know. Crosshair is not a member of the group now. He was annoying me throughout 
pretty much this whole damn episode. But I also know that they have chips in their brains that make them think that. Even Omega knows that. And obviously, why would she know that? You know what I mean? So they charged his up even more. So, yeah, he has less freedom of choice now. Less autonomy. And more control over him. Okay, controlling his actions, controlling his emotions. He's going against his former comrades, shooting at them. That's really sad to see. You know what I mean? And obviously it jumps the hurdle of him having to make the emotional choice and for the show to give us a reason for his motivation. The the reason is because he's being controlled, okay? And the chips and the other members of Clone Force 99, it isn't affecting them to the same degree really at all. In Star Wars Season 1 of the Clone Wars, we go to a snowy planet, okay? And there's basically the Jedi are there to investigate this outpost where... Republic troopers were killed, but they also found out another outpost, another outpost where separatist droids were killed or destroyed. But there's this primitive race on this planet, and this planet is basically on the brink of civil war, and it's up to Anakin and Obi Wan to help negotiate peace. Okay, so what was really cool about this episode is we're at the snowy planet, we get to see these Jedi where. In their Jedi outfits were basically these upgraded versions, okay, where they have these these big insulated garments to shield them from the cold. They're basically wearing these big, thick, not big, thick, but these awesome looking coats, okay. And Depa Biloba and Caleb Doom, they were just wearing their cloaks. So I guess I'm wondering if they thought about that at all because they were on a snowy planet. I don't know if it's I don't know if it was as cold as this one in Star Wars Clone Wars, but I just wanted to point that out that. We know Jedi do wear other things for different environments, so show me some more of that. You know what I mean? Uh, maybe if they are going to show Depa Bilobo one time, they won the show her in her Jedi get-up. Okay? Her traditional Jedi garments. Okay, so that was my little bone to pick right there. And we got to, see, we got to hear something about a clearance code. I love clearance codes. We got to hear Hunter reach out his hand to Caleb Doom and said, Come with me, just like Vader did to Luke. And then... Just like Luke did, he was denied, and he jumped over that ravine. And, of course, we know that um, Crosshair saw the footprints, okay? Or he, or he at least had a pretty good idea that he got away. It's great to see Tarkin again. Um, I don't have too much to say on him. I enjoy his character quite a bit. He's great in Episode 4. He's great in Rogue One. He's great when I see a young Tarkin in the Clone Wars, which I understand is like a couple years before this. So it's good to see him again. And, it's, you know, it's weird. It's because Tarkin in Episode 5 is very imposing. And the same thing with Rogue One. Not Episode 5. Tarkin in Star Wars Episode 4, A New Hope, is very commanding on screen. Very commanding. But in The Clone Wars, the voice actor, he's playing a younger version. And he seems kind of wimpy. I know he's not wimpy. And when he comes to Kamino, he is, their fa you know, he's there to represent the Emperor. But it just, I guess, you know, I want him to be a little more imposing. He seems like this short little, I don't know. I don't want to say the spoiled rich kid. Because I know that's not the case. But, yeah, I'm, I'm just used to seeing him when he's older. You know what I mean? Uh, Echo, PTSD, because obviously everything that happened to him with the Separatists. I mean, this is like a couple months after. Or, I mean, no, this, is a couple, this isn't a couple months. This shit literally... Echo has not been with the Bad Batch for very long at all. It's just very, not weeks or maybe a couple months after the events in, in uh, Season 7. I love this episode. Hope you enjoy my reaction. J19, what is that? Who is this friend? Any theories? Hmm. Guys, I've racked my brain. I'm not sure who's on J19. I can't even begin to comprehend or imagine creatively or intellectually who could be there guys also make sure you check out me and zach okay i'm taking him through star wars the clone wars he's going through it fresh okay i admit he has seen star wars the force awakens but other than that he's been out of the star wars game for a long time so i hope you enjoyed this reaction go back and check out those other reactions now they come out weekly okay that being said i'm out of here Guys, thank you so much for watching this episode of Star Wars The Bad Batch. I hope you really enjoy my reaction. And if you like Thursday reactions and you want to support this channel, just like this video, subscribe, 
check out all our other reactions. Check out our other Star Wars content, Clone Wars, The Mandalorian, and there also will be more, so check it out.